Films weren't always rated in the standard G, PG, PG-13, or R format that we're all accustomed to. Although, the idea of controlling media output is one that dates back to the earliest popularization of film. The Hayes Code, which is said to be the first formal attempt to censor film, was set up by the Motion Pictures Distributors Association of America, or better known as MPAA, in 1930. The Hayes Code was a set of guidelines which regulated the production of motion pictures in America between 1930 and 1968. The code was supposedly put in place for the general intent of keeping film wholesome for its viewers, and while that seems like a pretty noble task, filmmakers soon found the rules to be very restrictive, and from a modern perspective, strangely specific. The Hayes Code banned the depiction of two characters kissing in a bed, the depiction of interracial couples, and the ridicule of the clergy. Now, the immediate downside to these codes was that they were very limiting to directors, but further down the road there's an obvious bigger impact. By making a very closed-minded, simple, and undiversified world on screen, there leaves no room for progressiveness and leads to the spread of ignorance. In 1952, the Supreme Court seemed to agree with the creative minds in Hollywood, ruling that motion pictures are a form of self-expression and therefore protected under the First Amendment. Although it took until 1968 for the MPAA to abandon the Hayes Code, and it took until 1993 for the last standing censorship board in America to disband. To replace the Hayes Code, the MPAA came up with a modern rating system in 1968. This way, it wouldn't be up to directors to tailor their movies for the general population. It would be up to the general population to carefully select their movies based on their own comfort level. Directors would be allowed to create any movie they wanted and then submit their movies for ratings to the MPAA. Films would be given a G, PG, R, or X, now known as NC-17. Later, PG-13 was added on. This picture is an overview of film rating system. Notice there is a very general description of each ra rating level. A G rating movie has nothing that would offend parents for viewing by children. A PG suggests parental guidance. A PG-13 strongly cautions that children under the age of 13 do not watch. R contains some adult material, while NC-17 is clearly adults. But what constitutes material that parents would find offensive versus material that parents wouldn't find offensive for their children to be viewing? Although the MPAA tries to refrain from making specific rules pertaining to the rating system, they do admit to concentrating in specific areas. The MPAA takes a poll each year asking parents what issues they think are most concerning in films. This image is a chart which maps out what each section of the country is most concerned with. As you can see, on the east and west coast there is a high concern for violence, while on the south it is language and sexual content in the Midwest. This could explain why films in America are rated conservatively in regards to sexual content and language, while violence is seemingly more lax. A perfect example of this would be Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which received a PG-13 despite the fact that, that it features 75 deaths, while Bridget Jones' Diary is rated R. Jack Valenti, former CEO of the MPAA, once declared, I don't have child psychologists or specialists on my board. I want normal people making th these decisions. The MPAA insists that if polls shifted, their rating methods will, ch will change. And they have before. In 2007, smoking was added as a factor in the film rating process in response to growing concern for depicting smoking as normal or cool to children. So the MPAA seems to be doing their job, keeping adult content out of the reach of young children and working with parents to evolve and keep kids' movies better protected. Plus, movie theaters don't have to restrict anyone from going into the movie. What they choose as their policy is up to them, and filmmakers don't have to get their films rated. Would it surprise you then? If there was actually a lot of criticism pointed towards the MPAA and rating systems, first and foremost, because filmmakers want to make their movies as accessible to as many people as possible, and the rating system works against that, especially when a film gets a rating of R or above. The average adult goes to see about six movies a year, while the average teenager goes to see at least 50. Obviously, the larger audience here is the adolescents, and if movie makers can't reach them, they lose a lot of revenue. Most movie theaters operate under the policy that if you are under 17 years of age, you must be accompanied to an R-rated movie by someone who is 25 or older, making it difficult for someone under the age of 17 to see an R-rated movie. And if the film is NC-17, it's even worse for filmmakers. Forget making a movie successful. If you get an NC-17 rating, then you'll need luck just making your film available. According to director John Walters, all the big chains that carry about 40% of all videos sold will not carry NC-17. If a director wants to challenge the received rating, they are encouraged to re-edit the film, after which the ratings board will re-evaluate the movie. 
yes, filmmakers don't have to submit their work to the rating system or re-edit them if they don't want to. But if they don't, they will have a lot of trouble selling their movie. The MPAA insists that its intent is never to sway a director, saying, The MPAA takes pride in our long-standing and continued commitment to the First Amendment and has consistently resisted calls for government censorship. It goes on to say that the MPAA is a necessary organization and the voice of one of the country's strongest and most vibrant industries. While many others in the filmmaking business would agree with the SlashFilm.com managing editor David Chen, it's time for more people to condemn the MPAA and their outrageous antics. We're heading towards an age when we don't need a mommy-like organization to dictate what our delicate sensibilities can and can't be exposed to. I deeply hope that the MPAA's irrelevance is imminent. And thus presents the large controversy of film's rating system. Do we protect our children from inappropriate media and possibly sacrifice freedom of speech? What do you think?